Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will be learning about osteomyelitis. Definition It is the inflammation of bone or bone marrow, usually due to infection. Types of osteomyelitis Pyogenic and tuberculosis. Pyogenic being the major cause. Now let's see pyogenic osteomyelitis in detail. Etiology It is usually caused by bacteria, most common being Staphylococcus species that is aureus in about 80-90% to 90 of the cases. Other organisms like Escherichia coli, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Neisseria gonorrhoea, Haemophilus influenza, and Salmonella species also cause pyogenic osteomyelitis. Now let's see portal of entry of organism. How the organisms enter into the body and cause osteomyelitis. Number 1. Hematogenous spread. Through infection like skin postures, or pimples can call it, or infected teeth and gums and intestinal mucosa or minor injury of mucosa. They somehow reaches the blood and cause bacteremia which will lead to pyogenic osteomyelitis. Number two, they can also enter directly, that is direct implantation. Organism may enter into bone by penetrating wounds, open fractures or surgical procedures. Now let's see pathogenesis. Mild injury or trauma can initiate bacteremia. After causing bacteremia, infection reaches metaphysis, that is the main site of long bone due to presence of capillaries loop in the metaphysis area. In the metaphysis area, there is loop of cap capillaries. For suppose this is the nutrient artery which comes and this is the ascending part and then in the metaphysis area, there is loop of capillaries. So due to this presence of loop of capillaries, it slows the blood flow, which provides time for bacteria to penetrate blood vessels walls. And establish infective foci within the marrow, within the marrow. And after that, it will lead to inflammatory reaction. The bacteria grow and induce an acute inflammatory reaction with exudates. Along with inflammatory reaction, they also produce exudates. And then they will cause necrosis of bone. Exudates increases the pressure on the adjacent blood vessels and further decrease the blood flow. After that, they will pro uh, produce bone necrosis. Due to decrease in blood flow to the bone, it will cause necrosis of the bone. That is, after that, it will lead to sequestrum. This sequestrum is dead piece of bone. And after that, uh, there will be formation of new bone covering, that is involucrum. This new uh, bone covering will, will cover the sequestrum. Now let's see involucrum in detail. After first week, chronic inflammatory cells becomes more numerous. Like after, after formation of sequestrum, chronic inflammatory cells become more numerous and the cytokine release stimulates osteoclast, osteoclastic bone resorption. First, they will... Uh, they will they will stimulate osteoclastic bone resorption and then later they will cause deposition of reactive bone in the periphery. Reactive new bone forms a sheet, a sheet uh, around the necrotic sequestrum. This reactive new bone form is known as involucrum. So now let's see in diagram. For suppose um, this is the sequestrum that is that part, that, uh, that piece of bone. The uh, involucrum is the reactive new bone which covers the sequestrum. Now let's see morphology. Gross. Sequestrum appear as fragment of bone with rich brownish to black color margins. So the color is brown, brownish to black colored. And microscopy. In initial stage, only the neutrophils are seen. As the disease becomes chronic, Neutrophils at mix with chronic inflammatory cells. So in the initial stage, we will see neutrophils and later we will see both neutrophils as well as chronic inflammatory cells. Now let's see complication. Septic semia, acute separative arthritis, pathological fractures, chronic osteomyelitis, chronic osteomyelitis. And now let's see clinical course. Present with malaise, fever, chills, leukocytosis, and throbbing pain over the affected region. So that's all for today. Thank you everyone for watching.